everybody. The title of this talk is Immunity to Falsehood. A few weeks ago while listening to Radio Lab, I was struck by the resonance this program had about the thymus with teshuva. So the scientific information has been quoted from the transcript from that show. If you're interested, just Google Radio Lab Thymus. The thymus is a tiny organ that lays on top of the heart. Its importance has only recently been recognized, and wonderful research and use has been made of this tiny but mighty organ. The thymus is the seat of self-knowledge. It teaches the body to know what is you and what is not you. Immunologist Sharon Stranford says that the immune system only attacks when it notices something foreign and it doesn't attack your own tissues and cells. It's made of B cells, T cells, and other white blood cells. Wannabe T cells leave the bone marrow and we don't know how it happens, but they enter the bloodstream and somehow they're called to the thymus where they become T cells. T stands for thymus. The thymus produces T cells that attack the marauding invaders of our body. Its job is to know what is an invader and what is the self. It does this job so well that doctors are beginning to include a smear of thymus along with any other organ they transplant in order to avoid the necessity of anti-rejection medicine for the rest of the patient's life. The thymus does this through AIR, A-I-R-E, autoimmune regulator that lives in it. It teaches us how to know ourselves, to protect what is us so that our immune system doesn't destroy our healthy cells. It's the Jiminy Cricket of our immune system, the seat of self-knowledge. So air lives inside certain cells in the thymus and it gives these cells like a superpower, which is that every cell in the body has a full copy of DNA. But each cell uses only, only the part that applies to it. So the heart uses the heart stuff, the liver uses the liver stuff. But air, A-I-R-E, allows the thymus cells to access almost any part of the DNA. I just think it's so cool. We say that our self-knowledge comes from our hearts, as in what's truly in your heart. He's a heart-centered person. But perhaps with our new understanding of the thymus, we will form new sayings like, thymus, know thyself. The thymus attacks unhealthy cells that enter our bodies so that we can remain healthy and live our best lives. There's a more ephemeral quality inside us that we need to tune into during Elul. The lesson that the thymus teaches us is to look at what people, values, teachers, food, experiences are healthy for us. We're presented with thousands of choices throughout our lives. I remember in my late 20s, I had friends who followed Sri Shimoy. They meditated on his photograph. He was their vehicle to God. I knew I had a, a direct connection. This path was so not me. Little by little, by experiencing what was not me, I was hit with instant knowing of what was me when I came to a vegetarian potluck dinner to celebrate the joyous holiday of Purim. Homentashin? That was me. We need to discern what belongs inside us and what we need to fend off. And hey, didn't most of us have a first husband? And it's our friendship with someone is is our friendship with someone sucking our life force? If so, time to step away. Our spiritual bone marrow are the words of the Torah, and the great Rebbe's commentaries create our T cells. 
When we go out into the world, the Torah says we must kill our enemies, that which does not belong to us, that which distracts us from acting out of our authentic, healthy selves. Not every T cell develops the ability to fight off the attacking bacteria, and sometimes we're fooled into thinking that certain choices are safe to take. Did you know that when we do the alche and we beat our chest, we're stimulating the thymus? My Qigong teachers have instructed me to tap my thymus because as we age, the thymus shrinks. So this Rosh Hashanah oh, and Yom Kippur, remember when you're doing this, do it lightly because you don't want to have inflammation, but it's also stimulating the thymus and the thymus is our metaphor for keeping us healthy. This Elul, let us align ourselves with inspiring role models, like Mr. Rogers, who is concerned that our society is more interested in information over wonder, noise over silence. He asked, how do we inspire reflection? The answer is to remember that we excel at being ourselves. As Rev. Mr. Rogers said, you're the only person who can be exactly like you, and he, and God, likes you just the way you are. I'd like to close this little talk with a song from my early childhood that Danny Kay sang on an album called Tubby the Tuba at the Circus. Be yourself, you can't be anybody else. Be yourself is my advice to you or you'll always be a nobody so be yourself or else a hippopotamus would look very curious flying like a butterfly a fierce and hungry lion would look very silly trying to bake an apple pie i think you'd get a laugh if you saw a tall giraffe swinging by his tail from a tree. I think an octopus would look quite ridiculous knitting sweaters at the bottom of the sea. So be yourself and do the things that you know best. Be yourself. I think you would be happiest by being no one else but you. Do part two. Thank you. Very inspirational. I love it. Shamati va hafti. Shamati. Do you want to blow the shofar and then we'll be okay. Okay. You're going to blow. Give it my best. Yeah. Okay.